What's up, journeyers? Welcome to today's Tuesday live training. Super happy to have you guys here on a Tuesday. Yay! So I'm really excited about today's topic. We are talking about setting financial boundaries. Now, interestingly enough, one of our members um, told me a story about a couple week or two ago um, about things that were going on in her world. And this was the inspiration for me wanting to talk about this. Literally, as I was listening to her voice message, I wrote at the top of my piece of paper, I wrote setting financial boundaries. <laughs> And so it was funny when I posted this event, she was like, oh, I could have used this weeks ago. I was like, I know, that's why I'm doing it. So let's talk about boundaries. Boundaries are not just for countries. These days, they're not even for that. So what do I mean when I say boundaries? And I, I did title this event, Just Say No. And sometimes a boundary is not always a no. So what is a boundary? A boundary is a, a line that you draw in the sand where you say anything beyond this is not acceptable. I will not put up with, I will not tolerate, and will not be a part of, I will not participate in anything beyond that line. Um, that line can be wherever you want it to be, but it's very important that you get super clear on where the line really is, what it really means, and that you tell the uh, involved parties what that boundary is. Now, this is true in relationships. This is true in professional work. This is true in business. And it is especially true with money. Because the thing is, nobody can pull at the little shame guilt strings better than the people that are closest to you. And so a lot of times you see this kind of boundary issue when it comes to your friends and your family. Like nobody says, man, I have a really hard time setting boundaries. I keep letting strangers in the, into my house. Nobody says that, right? Because if a stranger, someone you don't know, pushes your boundaries, and tries to cross that line, it is very easy for us to be like, the hell do you think you're doing? Get out of my house, right? You don't belong here. That's not acceptable. You don't get to touch me that way. You don't get to talk to me. I don't know you, right? But when it's somebody who is close to us, when it's a friend, when it's a family member, there's that like feeling of like emotional obligation, right? Where it's like your family member shows up out of the blue on your doorstep and is like, hey, I'm here to visit. You're like, I don't really, I don't really want people in my house right now. Like I don't really want anybody visiting. Like it's not clean. Like we like our privacy, but like your family is like, um, okay, like I guess you can come in. Right? Why? Because they're family. And so there's this feeling where you're just like, oh, well, because they're family, because they're my friend, like I have to let them do this and I have to do this, right? Now, is it true that there are things that you will do for friends and family that you would never do for a stranger? Absolutely. But the truth is when you set a boundary, it is way easier for us to hold that boundary tight with a stranger, way much easier to do it that way than it is with a friend and family. So I'm going to talk you through today what kinds of financial boundary pushing you might see um, and how to know where you want to set that boundary and then how to communicate that clearly. So if you are here and jumping on or if you are catching the replay, drop in the comments um, if you've ever had experience with financial boundaries being pushed or if maybe there's a specific boundary that you are worried about or you can just say hi. That's okay too. So a couple different uh, examples. Now, these are. This is not an exhaustive list. There are a lot of different ways that people um, push financial boundaries with their friends and families. The number one most obvious one is, "Hey, can I borrow some money?" Okay, can I borrow some money? And so, sometimes you're like, "Okay, yeah, sure, here's five bucks," right? And sometimes it's a lot more money than that, right? And so, them wanting to borrow money from you, um, and we'll talk about kind of how to determine boundaries. But this is just an example. So, a friend or family wants to borrow money. Um, another one might be um, that they just kind of expect you to buy them things or um, of course. no, I cannot work today <laughs> or boundary <laughs> 
or they expect you to do things or buy things for them. Um, you see this a lot is kind of a subtle thing where they'll be like, um, you know, maybe maybe you bought them like a ten dollars Starbucks gift card for their birthday or something, and then they see that you went on a on a big expensive vacation, and they're like, oh, must be nice. Well, I'll just be uh, sitting here uh, drinking my Starbucks. And trust me, people who want to push your boundaries will always be passive aggressive. They may start that way. They may get aggressive too, but they will always start passive aggressive, right? So this idea of like making you feel guilty for spending money on yourself as opposed to spending money on them. Um, I know that one of the things that we struggle with um, is seeing family members do all of these big things for themselves and for other people's kids and then like never doing anything for our daughter. And you're like, you, when was the last time you bought, like, you haven't bought her a birthday present, you haven't bought her a Christmas present, like, there's all these things, but, like, anyways, that gets frustrating for us, but we understand that we don't get to control what they do with their money, and so we don't go through and manipulate and try to make them feel guilty for it. We feel a feeling, and we let it go, okay? So, trying to borrow money, making you feel guilty for how you're spending your money, um, and also, co-signing is a big one. So if you've got a friend or family member who's got bad credit um, and they're trying to buy a car, they're trying to get a loan, trying to do whatever, and they want you to co-sign because you've got good credit and they're like, oh, I'm good for it. I'm good for it. I'm good for it, right? I'm good for it. I'll pay you back, right? Um, that is another financial boundary that you might see being pushed. Um, and there's a ton of other uh, little boundaries that get pushed that um, – are indirectly related to money. I know I have heard of a couple who their best friends love going on these lavish vacations and they always just put theirs on the credit card and deal with it later. And they always want their friends to come with them. And the friends are like, we don't have the cash for that level of a vacation and we don't use debt, we don't use credit. And so like we like there was this clash there um, about the vacation, right? So there's a lot of different varying things that you might see as far as financial boundaries goes. One, the three biggest ones is um, wanting to borrow money, making you feel a feeling about something you purchased or didn't purchase, right? And kind of manipulating you that way, um, or wanting to co-sign a loan. Hey, Ashley. Um, so those are the three big ones. Again, you're gonna see lots and lots of different things. So how do you know where your boundaries are? How do you decide where you wanna set a boundary when it comes to friends and family and especially when it comes to your money? Now, the first thing you have to do, and this is a core component of my group coaching program, a core piece of this, is you have to know your own values and principles around money. You have to know what your non-negotiables are. So for example, one of ours is we value being debt free. We value living um, without a bunch of debt. And so one of our principles is we do not um, use debt for, uh, as a crutch for, for things we just want. Um, we will use debt for investments. We will use debt for uh, purchase of like a home, like our house obviously is financed. Um, and we'll use it for things we need if necessary. But we, one of our principles is we do not use debt as a crutch for something we want uh, in order to just get it sooner, right? And so that's a big thing for us. So if we had somebody trying to say, hey, you should do this and you need to do this thing, just, ah, just put it on your credit card. That would be a boundary for us, right? We would say, I get that that's what you want from us, but we're not going to do it that way. That's not how we function. That is a non-negotiable for us. So the first thing that you have to do if you want to set financial boundaries is you have to go internal and figure out what your values and principles around money are. A value is like, um, values are subjective. They can kind of change with the wind a little bit sometimes, not always. You have core values, right? But a value is like how you feel about something. And then the principle is the objective way that you kind of implement the value. So again, our value is we value being debt free. And the principle behind that is we don't use debt just to buy things we want, just so that we don't have to save up for them. Okay. Um, so know your own values and principles. Once you know those, it becomes a lot easier to identify the times when people start pushing your boundaries. Um, and so another thing that we value is preserving our, um, our financial, what's the word? Like your credit score is not a great indicator of your financial success, but it sure does make things easier. Okay. You do not have to have a credit score to live in life. Okay. Um, but 
we don't want anything that is going to completely jack up our credit score. And so the idea of signing, uh, of co-signing a loan with someone, we're not sure if they're going to pay it back. Mm -mm. Nope. That is a hard line boundary for us. We will not ever co-sign a loan with somebody ever, ever. Um, it's just, that's a hard line boundary because um, we value number one, not being in debt. And we would technically be in debt if we co-signed that. And we also value protecting our own ability to take care of our family and do the things we need to do financially. Um, so once you know your values and principles, as people start pushing those boundaries, you're gonna be able to start identifying them. Um, the goal would be to identify them ahead of time. We have never had anybody ask us to co-sign a loan ever, but I already know based on what I've seen with other people, right? I've seen it happen in other people. I'm like, mm, we're not doing that. <laughs> we're not doing that. That's a hard line boundary for us. Um, so the second thing, so identify your own values and principles. And then the second thing is start to identify what things that you absolutely non-negotiable will never do. We will never co-sign alone. We just won't. Um, we just won't. So that's, a, that's a big thing for us. I know um, I've heard of some people who they uh, didn't, it wasn't necessarily co-signing. Well, I guess it, it did end up being co-signing, but they made it seem like, oh, this is for your benefit. Like, I'll put your name on the loan because then it'll help your credit as it gets paid. And you're like, thank you. Parents do this to their kids all the time. Y'all don't freaking do this. Do not do this. Do not put your kid's name on some loan that you're going to try to pay off because if you screw it up, because life happens, right? If you screw that up and you can't get that paid up, you've now ruined your kid's credit. Don't do that shit, okay? Ah, but I've seen it. Okay. So the co-signing thing. So start to identify what are the non-negotiables with your money? What are the things you'll never, ever, ever do? I will never co-sign a loan. Um, I will never, uh, nowadays our big boundary is we don't put things on credit that, that we can afford to save up for if we wait. Um, so identify those. The third thing is start to identify the, uh, the boundaries that may shift right? The boundaries that may shift or that kind of, it's not a non-negotiable never, it's a under this circumstance. So here's a good example is um, we, maybe it's an um, amount that you're willing to let somebody borrow from you, right? Um, maybe you say, okay, I'm willing to lend up to $500 to a family member at any given moment, right? Um, and so if they come to me with a thousand, I can't do it. But if they say I don't only need 500, then I'm willing to do that one time, right? So figure out what those little pieces are. Like, you know what? I want to be able to help family out. Because this is the thing. Setting boundaries doesn't mean that you never help anybody. It doesn't mean that you never, uh, you know, help people out financially. It doesn't mean you never share your money. It doesn't mean you never buy things for people. It means that you decide which things you participate in financially, right? And that's what I'm all about with your money journey anyways, right? Is that you get to decide what it looks like. So identify the non-negotiables, but then also start identifying where those lines get drawn. Um, one thing for us that is a little bit of a um, kind of a subjective, depends on the situation kind of a boundary for us is we do not loan people money. This is our, our personal value because we value being debt free. We would never want anybody to be in debt to us. I don't want that. This is a part of the reason why I'm resistant even to payment plans. I don't ever want anybody to be in debt to me um, because of that value and that principle that I hold. So if we are going to help someone financially, if we are going to give them money, if we are going to buy something for them, if we're going to do something to help them financially, it is not a loan. It is a gift. That is one of our values. And so that's one of those things where we go, okay, a boundary is that we never loan money to people. However, that means that if they need help, we'll still help, but it's a gift and not a loan. And that is just, a, that's a value that we hold. And so again, this is why you have to start with identifying your values and principles around money, which is something we do in my group program is actually figure out how to do that. <laughs> like, How do you figure out what those things really look like? So once you've gone through this process, once you know your values and principles, once you've discovered your non-negotiables, and once you've figured out what are the things that are kind of conditional, where like I'd be able to, I'd be willing and able to help in this circumstance. I'd be willing and able to be a part of this in this circumstance. And maybe you are willing and able to co-sign a loan, but only for certain people and only for certain amounts and only for certain situations, right? Like you're willing to co-sign a loan 
it, to help them get their first car. If you've already seen their bank statements and you know what income they have and you know that they can make the payment easily without, right? Like it's okay to have conditions on these things, right? They are your boundaries. You get to decide what they look like. So values and principles, non-negotiables, and then conditional boundaries. Once you know where you're at, and remember that your boundary lines can change. Over time, something may happen, your situation may change, someone else's situation may change, and you may decide, you know what, I know that we said we would never do that. However, in this circumstance, with this thing, with this thing, with this thing, I'm okay if we do it this way, okay? So now, as far as communicating those boundaries, Number one, if you are married, your boundaries need to be a group thing. You need to set these boundaries as a team, okay? As a team. Another boundary, even something as simple as we don't spend more than $300 without consulting each other or talking to each other or at least saying, hey, I need to get this thing. Is that okay? So there's a, there's a like point of financially, this is a financial boundary, is, hey, if you're going to spend more than $300, outside of your allowance because this is how my husband bought me my mother's day gift is he saved up his allowance it was like six hundred dollars but he saved up his allowance and that's how he did it <laughs> um if you're going to spend something more than three hundred dollars outside of your allowance we have to talk about it first because we have to make sure it fits into the to the financial cash flow plan right so that's number one is make sure that your spouse and you are on the same page about what your boundaries are as Especially, and please hear me, especially as it relates to family, because his family is your in-laws and her family is his in-laws, right? Like, he may have a totally different feeling about helping out his parents than you have about helping out his parents, okay? So make sure that you are on the same page together about what the boundaries are. What are the non-negotiables? And what are the conditions that you'd be willing to do X, Y, and Z under, okay? Once you're a united front, right? Once you're a team, then you can communicate those boundaries to the associated parties. Now, do I call all of my extended family and say, hey, FYI, we're only willing to loan you up to $500 if da, 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 here's our boundary, just letting you know. No, because 90% of my family would never call me and ask me for money, right? No, you don't have to broadcast to the world what your financial boundaries are. I talk about it because it's my job, <laughs> right? I talk about it because it's my job to talk about it. And you guys are welcome to ask me anything, right? But you don't have to broadcast it to the world if you don't want to, okay? But when that comes up, when you communicate it, if somebody calls you, if you, let's say you've decided you never loan more than $500 to a family member or a friend, okay? And you have a family member that calls you and says, I am desperate, this and this happened, I need $1,000. And you say, hey, Susie, I love you. I'm so sorry you're going through that. My husband and I have set a really solid boundary that we never loan more than $500 to a friend or family member, so we can help you out with the 500 and that's as far as we can go. Facts. Facts. We've set a boundary that this is all we'll, this is all we can do. Okay, this is a hard line for us. Okay, um, and then they're going to give you a sob story. Well, you don't understand. This is how you treat family, and I saw you go on vacation, and I know you have more money than five hundred dollars. Right, Susie. We've set a boundary that we don't loan more than $500. If you want our $500, we are happy to help you out under these conditions of repayment, if that's how you're choosing to do things, under these conditions of repayment. If you're not willing to accept that, that's fine. You'll just have to look somewhere else for help. You have to be solid because this person who is willing to push your boundaries, especially on a loan, again, this is why I don't loan money to people. <laughs> it's just not, like I've done it in the past. I loan money to a friend. I literally, we wrote out a whole promissory note. She signed it that she paid it back in a certain amount of time. And bitch, I never got my money back, okay? And it made me feel a way, right? It made me feel a certain way about her. It didn't affect her. She didn't give a crap. She got my $400 in the time of her life, right? And so I decided, number one, I don't want people to be in debt to me. And number two, I don't want to be the debtor or the, the yeah, person with the, no, I don't like it. I don't want to feel that way. I don't want to feel betrayed by family because they didn't pay me back. 
we don't loan money to people, okay? Um, but if you choose to do that, have the conditions, right? Under these circumstances, pay back within this amount of time, under this, whatever, whatever, whatever interest, if you really feel like it, right? Communicate it clearly and factually. Hey, Susie, we think that you're a shitty person and we don't trust you and I just don't think you're going to do good things with this money and so, like, I hate you and I'm not going to do that. It doesn't work. I mean, it does. But it will alienate friends and family. It will make them feel bad. It will make you feel bad. And it will it will hurt relationships, okay? If you can set these boundaries before the thing happens, right? If you can decide what your non-negotiables and what your conditionals are before the thing happens, before Susie calls and asks you for $1,000, then you can just say factually, hey, Susie, man, I'm sorry you're struggling with that. My husband and I decided long ago that we weren't going to loan any money, but we are willing to gift you $500 if that helps, okay? you've already decided what that looks like. It helps in the moment, because in the moment, your heartstrings are gonna be like, oh, poor Susie, right? And maybe you have somebody who come to you once to sign a loan, and you literally just say, sorry, man, I don't do that. Sorry, man, I don't co-sign loans. Maybe I can point you to a financial coach who can help you work out your budget so you can afford to do things that help your credit, and then you can buy it yourself. I can help you out that. I'll refer you to a great financial coach right? If you haven't set the boundary beforehand, you're going to get wishy-washy. You're going to start waffling. You're going to start feeling like you should do a thing. You should help, right? So the most important thing is getting these things laid out before it happens, okay? Now, you are going to have the circumstances where you tell the one family member, so you tell, let's say your, your nephew calls, and he needs $1,500 for something, something going on with school and a car and something else, something, right? And he knows you make a lot of money, right? And he's just like, you know, I'm your nephew, like I'm family. And you say, hey, this is the boundary. I need to see you doing this. I'm willing to loan it to you, but only under these circumstances. I need to see that you're doing this. You need to call me once a week. You need to whatever, right? And then you say, and then he gets upset and he goes and tells his mom. So now your sister's following you like, what the hell? You have plenty of money. Why are you an asshole, right? <laughs> They're going to tell other family members that you set a hard boundary, okay? It may get a little rocky at first, but if you have already gotten on the same page with your spouse, gotten really solid and really clear on what your values and, and principles are around money, what your non-negotiables are, and what conditions you're willing to do things under, there's just no negotiating. Boundaries are non-negotiable, right? Right? Um, okay, Ashley said, mm, codependence is a thing. My family is super codependent in all areas. It flipped my husband out when we first got together. I didn't realize how bad it was at first because it was normal to me. Over time, I've gotten better with boundaries in all areas, but I still feel a feeling when they ask. We get to make boundaries. Yes. And you know this, Ashley, if you don't already have those set decided boundaries, the moment some, something comes up and someone asks you for help and wants to do this and this and this, you're going to just feel all the feelings, right? And that process of, of that codependency happening on this side of the relationship, this side of the family, and then your husband going, what the hell? It now makes him even more resistant to wanting to help, right? So if you've agreed ahead of time, you know, I don't want to keep playing into the codependency, but I do want to help my family under certain circumstances. Let's decide what we are willing to do and what we are not willing to do. Set the boundaries ahead of time. And then when it comes up, he has already agreed. <laughs> he has already said, yes, I'm willing to do this under this circumstance. And so then he's more willing to help because you're now sticking to the boundaries that you guys agreed upon. Hope that makes sense. So, yeah. So that's financial boundaries. So let me recap. First thing to do is decide your values and principles around money. Value being how you feel about a certain thing. Principle being the objective way that you can implement that value. So the example I gave was we value being out of debt and the principle is on principle, we do not use debt to just buy things that we want. We only use it for investments. Um, so determine your values and principles around money. Set your non-negotiable boundaries. What are the things you never do? Never. We never co-sign a loan and we never loan money to people, ever. Then you set your conditional your conditional boundaries, right? So the condition we have is we will absolutely help financially and give money to people um but it's not alone 
right? So if we have the means in the moment to gift X amount of dollars to help the situation, we absolutely will. That's what we do. Outrageous generosity is one of my core values, okay? So that's a conditional thing. Like under these circumstances, if this, then this, okay? So that's how you set them. Communicating them. First thing, get on the same page with your spouse. Whoever it is that you're making money decisions with together, get on the same page. Because if you're not on the same page, you're not going to present a united front to whoever, whoever it is that's trying to push your boundaries, okay? Once you've done that, you don't have to communicate your boundaries to the whole world. You don't have to broadcast them. You don't have to like mass email your whole family. You don't have to do this. Unless this is like a, a huge problem, right? You can if you need to. If literally every family member is calling you every other day to borrow money, you can just be like, listen, stop calling me. <laughs> but otherwise, when you communicate it in the moment when something's going on, you do it factually, objectively. We've decided as a team, this is a boundary that we have. Now, last thing, I'm going to teach you uh, a sentence. This one sentence is one of the most powerful sentences that you can learn to really learn how to communicate and stick to your boundaries in a way that is really clear to the other person and really empowering for you, okay? So one sentence, are you ready? No. <laughs> yeah, no is a complete sentence. No is a complete sentence. If you've communicated objectively, if you've said, we've set this boundary, this is a thing we're not going to do. I'm sorry that you're going through that, right? And they get all crazy. The, the sentence you need to make it very clear to them and to be empowering to you and your boundaries. No. 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 No, we're not doing that. No. Okay. Just say no. There are going to be people who don't want to hear your story. They don't want to hear your explanation. They don't want to hear why you set the boundary. They don't want to hear what your boundary is. They're going to continue to push it. And the only thing you can say to them at that point is no. Nope. Okay. So I hope that that was super helpful for you guys. Boundaries are super important in money because when you really start to get control of your own money journey and you really start to make decisions for yourself, for you and your family of what you want it to look like, other people are going to take notice because guess what happens when you start getting control of your money? You start having more of it. You start doing cool things. You start paying off your debts. You start getting to go on that vacation you've always wanted to go to because you finally figured out how to save money. You figure out how to take your kids to Disneyland, right? And everyone else is going to go, hey, they went to Disneyland. Where'd they get the kind of money to go to Disneyland? I wonder if they could loan me some money. Okay? This is going to happen. When you start winning with money, your boundaries will start to be pushed. So the best thing you can do is be prepared ahead of time. Okay? All right. That's all I've got for you guys today. I love you very much. Have a fan freaking tastic Tuesday as always. Trust yourselves and enjoy the journey. Bye guys.